<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what is the scariest thing? Shadows, hat man, etc. A child has told you, that gave you chills. I grew up in a cabin house out in the woods with only one neighbor. My dad always watched scary movies, which I watched with him, so I was very afraid of the dark. Aside from having trouble sleeping, I was especially troubled by the bathroom in my room. It always felt like I was being watched. I would always be scared to pull the shower curtain back because I was so convinced someone or something would be there. Well, we moved out. No scary shower demons. A few years later, my dad's girlfriend had a friend move into the house. Her daughter was three to four years old and had recently picked up the habit of taking gum from her mom's purse. Her mom let it slide because she was young. Until one day, she asked her daughter why she kept taking the gum without asking. Her daughter replied, it's for the little boy who lives in my bathroom. She has my old bedroom. I went camping in Jasper during the summer. On the campsite next to me, there was a family with a daughter who was four and a son who was five. They were the most adorable kids I'd ever seen. Anyway, their parents were setting up a tent, and they were filling a muddy cup with mud and berries. I asked what they were going to do with the mixture. They told me not to touch it because they had found a frog, stabbed it with plastic forks, and then put it in the bottom of the cup. They then continued to tell me about how they were going to bring it to a priest and watch him drink it, choke on it, and die. I basically repeated what they said, thinking I'd heard them wrong. Nope. They then went on to tell me I was their new best friend. This happened around midnight last night. I was watching a movie in my bedroom when I saw one of my daughters walk down the hallway to use the bathroom, I presume. A second later, I saw another daughter walk down the hallway, and that's when I got up, thinking they had a bed accident or something. I went to the bathroom, and they were both staring into the sink, and I said what are you girls doing? My older daughter said, I'm looking for it, but I can't find it. I walked over to them and peered into the sink, nothing was there. Looking for what? She didn't respond, just blinked. I shook her and told them both to get back to bed. Earlier this year, I was getting up to use the restroom, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw a small child standing at the foot of my bed. I stopped dead in my tracks and turned around, but by that time she was gone. I ran into my kid's room, but they were both asleep in bed. The figure was as tall as my youngest, but she had long, pitch black hair and black eyes. My youngest has short curly hair, so there's no way it could have been her. The next day I did a sage burning, my brother suggested it, and my eldest daughter asked what the smell was. I told her what I had seen, and she said she'd seen something similar as well as an older man that wears a suit with a fedora hat. My nephew used to play alone and talk to himself. It was like he was having a full-on conversation with air. When we would ask who he was taking, he would get really defensive about it and say, no one. We all thought he was having an imaginary friend stage, and it was funny until it wasn't. It got scary one night when my sister was putting him to bed. She was making him say his prayers when he turned to her and said, Mommy, if I pray really hard, will the whispers go away so I can sleep? She asked what he meant by the whispers, and he said, the people talking at night in my room. There was a troubled kid who lived next to me for a year or two. Troubled as in very unstable home life, dad who wanted nothing to do with him, brother lived with grandma. And I always felt bad because I didn't think he knew as much as other people, neighbors, like me, did about what happened in his family. His family was sort of infamous in our community. One day, while playing basketball in my yard, he said that he had an imaginary friend he talked to. At the time, I was 12 and he was probably 9, so we were past the imaginary friend age. He said the friend talks back to him sometimes and that they had a conversation. In a cocktail of sympathy and 12-year-old sarcasm, I asked him if they ever talked back. He said yes, and that he could make him talk right now if I wanted because he was with us. I said, sure, go ahead. He asked a question out loud. I don't remember what it was. And we both heard a voice almost from above that responded. I never asked him to prove it again, and I was legitimately scared. Creepy ass situation. Not me but my son, before he started school, on the weekends, sometimes his dad and I would sleep in a bit. We'd wake up, and every single light in the house would be on except our bedroom light. He'd be sitting on the living room floor, watching cartoons. When we'd ask why all the lights were on, he'd tell us the man with no face was looking at him through the window. The window was in a door that led out onto a balcony. We got a curtain for the door, and he stopped turning all the lights on. He is 14 now. He says there is an entity still with him. A shadow person. He sees a counselor and a psychiatrist. No medication has made this shadow person go away. 
He says multiple friends have seen it around him, and he doesn't like to talk about it. One of his little brothers has started seeing shadow people too. I was 18 and living with my boyfriend and his family while I looked for my own apartment, so they gave me a room in exchange for my looking after his nephew, who was about three. He didn't speak English, and I didn't speak French, so this was a challenge. Once he was whispering something to me and I asked his mom what he was saying. She came closer and listened. He was saying my little duck over and over. Once he slowly opened my door, holding a butter knife, he smiled creepily at me and then went away again. Another time we were watching TV and talking in English when his mom said sometimes it's like he can understand us. He turns his head around, says yes, and then looks at the TV again. When I left, he put his blanket in the fire and dragged it out, setting the living room on fire. The crazy thing was that my boyfriend's mom was into voodoo to the extent that his dad wouldn't eat her cooking or wear the clothes that she laundered. He would go around the house at night with a church incense burner and bless each room. My little sister was around, I wanna say, like, six? Maybe she was seven when she started talking about her imaginary friend the red man. She explained to me that he was a magician with a magic finger. I didn't think much into it, we were homeschooled, and she was incredibly bored before her friends got home. I assumed that's all it was. One day she came running into my room, very upset and frantic. She told me, I took his finger, and now he's really angry. I tried to calm her down, again assuming this was a six-year-old's imagination. But she was convinced he was coming after her, so for a few nights I let her sleep in my bed. She stopped talking about it for a few days and acted fine. Then, I was doing dishes with our brother, who's about two years older, he was never the type to have imaginary friends. He didn't pretend like that at all. So when he asked my sister if she'd seen the red man lately, I was a little shocked. Apparently he knew all about it too and was just as convinced it was real as our sister was. So I asked him, and he said they had been playing with the red man, and she'd accidentally taken his finger. I was starting to get very unsettled by all this. My sister drew pictures of him all the time, sometimes he'd look like a person, other times he'd look like a mist. The last straw was the evening me and her were outside late, my parents had brought a big load of groceries. She suddenly stiffens up and points. He's right there. I turn around to see where she's pointing. Across the street, under a large tree, was an unsettling sight. A tall man thing. He was very red, and I felt total dread looking at him. My parents were very religious at the time, they heard all about the situation and had my sister see the priest at our church, and it all seemed to stop. I didn't think about it for a long time until a few months ago, when my sister came to visit me at my house. She's 13 now. We were sitting outside talking when she, very casually, said. Do you think the red man still wants his finger back? I'll never know if she said that to mess with me or if something very strange is haunting my baby sister. But it spooks me nonetheless. My cousin was playing in his bedroom, at about age two, maybe three, when suddenly he started screaming and bolted out of the room into my arms. I asked him what happened, expecting him to say he got hurt or something, and he's sobbing, saying scary guy. It was the middle of the day, bright and sunny, and his room was on the second floor, so I just thought something startled him, and I was going to show him that everything was fine. I tried coaxing him back to the bedroom, but he wasn't having it. I went and checked the room myself, and there was nothing spooky, no one was there. So I finally convinced him to come back into the room, he insisted on being in my arms. When we got to the room, I said, see? Nothing to worry about. But he pointed to his closet and said, scary guy over there. So I walked over to the closet and looked. Nothing. So I said so. He turns around, looks up at the ceiling of the closet, and starts shrieking and climbing up my body, trying to get out of my arms and away from the closet. I bolted out of that room with him, and he calmed down. I never did figure out what he saw, but that room always freaked me out from then on until the day they moved. When my nephew was a toddler, about two years old, he would cry at night and say there was a man in a hat in the closet who would talk to him. He was petrified and wouldn't sleep in his bedroom anymore. He would only sleep in his sister's room every night. My brother lives in a home that was built by our grandfather. Our grandfather had cancer when we were teens. By the time it was found, it was really too late. Near the end of his life, we brought him back home and turned the office room into a hospital room. The same room that many years later became my nephew's bedroom. My brother, sister-in-law, and I, I was living at the house, too, at the time, were all a bit startled. We didn't think it could actually be our grandfather, though. He wasn't the type of man to pop out of a closet in the dark, scaring the snot out of a toddler. Whatever it was that my nephew saw or thought he saw has left him afraid of the dark and still preferring to sleep in the same room as his sister. 
I live with my fiancé and her two daughters, we've lived together for over a year. We just moved to the South but had previously lived in my home state, which was Ohio. We'd lived in a crappy apartment in a not great part of town, and for a while there was nothing. The youngest seemed really happy, but after she turned four, I noticed she began to tell us she played with Harlow. My sister has a daughter with that name, so I thought she meant her cousin and dismissed it. Until one day she told me, Harlow is a vampire. I dismissed this again, but over time things did get creepy, we'd hear her talking to nobody, and she would insist that Harlow was real. She'd tell us she was in the room, that she had red eyes, and would even point her out in my fiancé and my room. Eventually it started to feel really creepy, as this felt much less light-hearted than the other games she'd play. She'd tell us Sonic the Hedgehog was her boyfriend, she thinks it just means a friend who is a boy, and she loves Disney princesses, she isn't into scary things. She'd tell us that Harlow would talk to her and tell her our apartment was her house. I asked her, is Harlow coming with us? I figured imaginary friends could move, Sonic did, lol, but she said, no, that girl has to stay here, and that Harlow was mad she was leaving. Since we've moved, she's rarely brought her up, she still brings up Sonic, but when I asked her about Harlow, she said, that girl stayed at the house. So this happened a few years ago when my daughter was around 4 or 5. So my daughter started talking about her friend Emily. I just put it down to her imagination, as she's creative and always has been. Emily was mentioned a lot, then one day I was home alone just having coffee and watching TV when I heard my daughter's toys going off. They were all the sort that had to be pressed or pushed to make noise. She's monkey obsessed and had a big pink monkey that made monkey noises when the middle was pressed, but it's difficult to press it right, if that makes sense. This monkey was one of the toys that went off. I got up and walked to her room, and a couple of her other noisy toys were going off and flashing. The light on her small fish tank was on even though I knew I'd turned it off, I lived in the UK at the time and was on top up electric and gas. I was a bit freaked out, but not majorly, due to our old house having some serious haunting going on that was more malicious, and I didn't really feel that uneasy with this. I then noticed it was time to go pick my daughter up from school, so I switched the light off and left. On the way home, I thought I'd talk to her about Emily, and she started telling me a lot of details, like Emily is 18 and has long brown hair, her full name is Emily Rose Ward, she died when she got sick, and she wears a long nightie. Ward is a fairly common surname, but my great-grandmother's surname was Ward, and she died shortly after my daughter was born. I knew she had two sisters, one of whom was named Emily, who died of tuberculosis when she was 18. I'm now convinced she was my daughter's friend during this time. So, when my sister was probably about six or seven, she had an imaginary friend named Emily. She told us Emily lived in her closet, wore an old black dress, had long dark hair, and was the same age as my sister. My sister played with Emily constantly. My parents started noticing my sister acting weird. She was just sitting in the middle of her room, whispering to Emily quite a bit and acting a lot more distant towards them. I remember a very specific day when my brother was walking by her room and my sister was sitting in the middle of her room, but she turned around and hissed at him. He was scared shitless. He told me it didn't even look like my sister. My parents ran up to her room, and I could hear my sister just screaming and screaming as loud as she got out. I have no idea what happened in that room, but I ran to the bottom of my stairs, and the screaming stopped. I saw my parents holding my sister, crying their eyes out, she was sobbing as well. I asked her about it today. She's 24 now. She told me that Emily used to tell her to do horrible things to herself. She actually used to wake up on the roof and not remember how she got there. I'm not kidding. Apparently, Emily absolutely hated my parents, so she turned my sister against them. She hates talking about it, so I never brought up that specific night. This all happened at my old house. When we moved into a different house, Emily was gone. I'm not making any of this up. My sister's little friend was a really big deal to my family and messed things up for a long time. I'm just relieved we left that house. My parents told me this story. A little after I was born, my sister Julia had an imaginary friend named Jessica. She was Julia's friend for a long time, until things started to get a little weird. At first, my parents shrugged it off as a normal occurrence, but after a while, they began to believe that our house was haunted. One night, as my parents put me, about one year old, to sleep, I began to cry and point at the corner. My mom was still in there and began to try to comfort me, but I continued to cry and point at the same corner. All of a sudden, my sister walks into my room, points at the corner, and yells Jessica, stop it. Immediately I stop crying, and Julia says like it is completely normal that sometimes Jessica likes to put on scary masks and scare people. My mom, 
who was understandably freaked out, stammered to my sister tell Jessica that if she can't play nice, she can't play here at all. A couple weeks go by, and Julia tells my mom that her eyes turn green when she is mad, and her voice gets deeper. My mom didn't know how to respond to this and just said, okay. Eventually, Julia outgrows her imaginary friend and stops playing with her. A year and a half later, my little sister Abby begins to talk, she then goes on to tell us about her friend that no one else can see. She then tells my mom about how her eyes turn green when she is upset. I remember this distinctly because she dropped a pan, and it scared me. She asked Abby what her name was, and she said. Jessica. I've been living in the same house I grew up in my entire life. When I was little, around 5 or 6, I used to sleep in my parents' room because I was scared to sleep alone in my room. One night, I woke up and there was a man standing in the corner wearing all black with a shaved head, big eyes, a sad mouth, and big ears. He just stood there, looking at me from the corner, with his hands in his pockets. I close my eyes out of fear and drift off to sleep. I wake up again about 15 to 20 minutes later, and the man is now standing at the foot of my bed looking at me. His face was expressionless and kind of sad. I remember feeling scared and sad at the same time. I closed my eyes again, and when I opened them, he was gone. When I was around 8, I started calling him Mr. Man. This would happen about twice a week every week until I turned 11. I started to sleep in my own room at about the age of 9, embarrassing, I know, and Mr. Man would still show up. However, when I turned 15, he stopped. This was around the time that my grandfather, Sammy, passed away, and at the time, I thought the two were connected. I remember telling my mom about what had been going on shortly after the funeral, maybe a couple of days to a week, and she had me taken to a therapist to get evaluated and all that BS. All they found was that I had high levels of AD and ADHD. No signs of schizophrenia, which my mom was very scared of as my father's mother was paranoid schizophrenic. I wouldn't see Mr. Man for another four years. When I turned 18, though, I started noticing weird things happening around the house. The TV would turn on, or the volume would change rapidly, doors would open and close, and I noticed our animals started to act weird. My dog Flower would bark at the hallway every now and then, or she would get up from my bed and stare at the door with her ears perked up. Our cats would get puffed up out of nowhere and hiss at nothing. I would hear footsteps walking by my room in the middle of the night. I thought it was my dad walking to the bathroom as it was right next to my room, but as I got up to see who it was, the bathroom door was open and the light was off. I checked my parents' room, and both were in bed. I'm 20 now and still living with my parents as I'm going to a local college. Just about a year ago, he showed up again. It was early in the morning, around dawn, and I heard my door open. I thought it might have been my dad or something, but he would usually shut the door once he saw I was still asleep. When I noticed the door wasn't shut, I woke up and turned to see a silhouette of a man looking through the crack in the door. At first, I thought it was my dad and asked if it was him, but I didn't get a reply. It wasn't my dad, it was Mr. Man. This time, he had a hat on. I knew it was him because I noticed the big ears and eyes. He just stayed there, looking at me, for a good five minutes. I remember when I noticed I said, been a while, mister, and this was the first time I heard him speak. I remember he smirked and said, it has, hasn't it? His voice was deep and low, like James Earl Jones. Then the door slammed, and he was gone. Weird stuff still happens all the time. My dad is just now starting to admit that something weird is happening. Just last week, we talked about it, and he says he used to hear whispering at night and footsteps. Purple Mommy. When my son was first learning to talk, he would tell us about something called Purple Mommy. It could be an imaginary friend, but these details are a little bit creepy. Here are a few of the Purple Mommy details. Purple Mommy is all purple with long hair and bright all white eyes, at the time he mixed up purple with black, so he could have meant she was all black. Purple Mommy picks him up at night and turns off the lights. We would often find my son out of his crib in the morning, which would mean him crawling over the railing and to the ground at a time when he was barely walking. He definitely turned the lights in his room off a few times too, even though he was terrified of the dark. Purple Mommy needs a bandage because she has blood everywhere. Purple Mommy has no smile, meaning a mouth. Purple Mommy can take her head off. Purple Mommy really doesn't like daddy. He told us all of this stuff for maybe a year or a little more. If we ever asked where she was, he would always point to the same spot. A corner of the room behind his open closet door. He would also wake up crying almost every night during this time. Once, during a really rough night, my wife went to ask him what was wrong, and his answer was purple mommy won't let me sleep. I was visiting family for winter break in Los Angeles, this was about 5 years ago. 
I was heading to the bathroom on the second floor of my aunt's house when I saw my cousin, April, on the stairs. April was four and very animated. She was busy making funny faces while sitting on the stairs. I asked her what she was doing. She said, I'm copying the lady with the braid. I looked around, there was no one else but us. I asked, where is the lady, April? She pointed to a beam running parallel to the stairwell. I asked April, what is the lady doing? She said, making funny faces. I smiled and started walking up the stairs again when April said something that stopped me in my tracks. April, her braids are around her neck. I turned back and asked April to repeat herself. April pointed out, the lady is hanging by her braid. She's making funny faces. Then April started making a face, which I then realized was someone gasping for air. When I was a teen, I had some nightmares, at least I really hope that they were nightmares. The event I'm describing will explain why I'm unsure about that. These nightmares were broken up in weird ways, as nightmares often are, but they were of me being abducted by aliens. I always brushed them off as a product of my imagination. Fast forward 11 years. I have two children. I have never, and still haven't, spoken about those nightmares that the children might overhear. Only at home while they are gone, and only with a small, select group of people. Last summer, not the one we just got out of, my son was four, and I started having nightmares like that again but didn't tell anyone. That was in June. The nightmares hadn't stopped by mid-July, in fact, they were more frequent and longer, and I was waking up with bruises. I figured it was me thrashing about in my sleep, so I decided it was time to set up a counseling appointment. That night, my girlfriend and I are putting the kids to bed, and my son looks at his mom while I'm standing in the doorway. I assume he didn't realize that I hadn't entirely left the room, and due to the angle, he couldn't see me, and this conversation happens. Him, mommy, tell daddy he'll be okay. Her, what do you mean, daddy's fine. Him, but daddy's worried that when they come in their spaceship and take him, we might not come back. At this point, I am starting to have an anxiety attack, but I keep listening. Her, wait, are you talking about aliens? Him, yeah, but they like to be called planet strangers. Her, oh, is that so? Him, aha, uh -huh, but they said not to worry, they promised they would bring daddy back after they brought him up in their spaceship and that they wouldn't hurt him. Her, okay then, you sleep well, little man. Her and I stepped into the backyard, and she was smiling, thinking the whole thing was funny, until she noticed that I was visibly shaken. She asked me what was wrong, and I explained that I had been having those nightmares again for over a month. That was the most terrifying thing a child has ever said to me. When I was about 16, my little brother, who was six at the time, started telling me about a rabbit who would come and visit him. I blew it off, thinking it was his imagination. The next few days, it was all he talked about. How the rabbit would open a hole in the wall. He said he left his body and went through the hole, and the rabbit showed him places and told him things that, when he got back, he couldn't remember. I just told him he was probably dreaming all this up. That night, there was scratching on the wall in my room. I looked around and couldn't find anything making the noise, so I decided that it must be something outside or a mouse that got inside the wall. Well, it just got louder and louder. Until I finally got dressed and went outside. Nothing was there. I went back into my room, where the scratching was still going on. I hit the wall a few times, hopefully scaring away the rodent. It stopped for a few seconds and then continued. It kept going until around 3 AM, when it stopped completely. The next morning we were eating breakfast, and my little brother didn't say anything about the rabbit. As glad as I was to finally not hear him talk about it, it just wasn't normal. So I asked him didn't the bunny see you last night? Now, what he said chills me even today. He said, he didn't take me anywhere last night. He told me he was trying to see you, and you wouldn't let him in. He said you tried to hit him. After that, I started asking questions about this bunny. All I got was that he would take him places and tell him secrets. The stuff he learned he would forget when they came back. Also, the bunny wasn't just a bunny. He supposedly looked like the guy from Donnie Darko. A more realistic version. But the movie hadn't been released yet. The bunny finally quit coming around after another week. When he tried to get my brother to come live with him. My brother said no, he wanted to stay with his mommy and daddy. The bunny has never been back since. Sadly, my little brother passed away 10 years later. My niece and I always play hide and seek or I'm going to gobble the bug up. Whenever I go visit my sister. She used to love this game, and she always chose the same hiding spot in the closet next to the door where my sister kept wrapping paper and coats. I would search for a few minutes before finally getting to the closet, and since she is only two and quite short, 
I would look over her head and pretend not to notice her. After that, she would leave the closet and sneak up on me to gobble me up instead. The last time we played the game, she was in her usual hiding spot, and I guess she had managed to shut the door all the way. She would usually leave it cracked open so she could watch me search through the house and giggle. I noticed the door was shut all the way and figured she was just getting more brave and continued with my search, being more audible with my where's the little bug? Or when I find you, I'm going to eat you with gravy. Then I hear her little hands banging on the other side of the door. I hear her crying and screaming, and beggy. And beggy. This is her way of saying Aunt Becky. I go and open the door and grab her up, she's in hysterics, which I assume is from the darkness and the door having been shut all the way. I ask her if she's okay, and she points at the closet and goes, no. Bad man. Stay. She will not go near the closet, and neither will I. We still play the game, but her new hiding spot is in the shower with the bathroom light on. When my sister was six, she refused to go upstairs by herself at night. She never explained why, she just didn't like it and would throw a fit whenever we would ask her to go put on her pajamas after dinner. This happened for a few weeks, much to my parents' annoyance. My dad told her that there was no one upstairs and she would be fine, not to worry, etc. She stopped complaining for about a week, then one night she rounded the corner to go upstairs, and we heard this blood-curdling shriek, and my sister was sprinting to my dad and sobbing so hard she could hardly speak. She says that the man is by the front door now. Of course, my dad thinks someone is breaking into the house and goes to check, but there's nothing there. After some pressing, she said she didn't like going upstairs because there was a man in a black coat and hat staring at her from the end of the hallway, but that he had no face. The same man was now at the door. For reference, the layout of our house is this, from the dinner table, you have to walk through the kitchen and around a corner into the entryway to go up the stairs. Once you're upstairs, there's a long landing leading to a hallway that runs the length of the house and ends in the laundry room. My sister's room is on the opposite end of the hallway by the landing. Up until this point, there were instances where I saw the same dark figure with the hat around the house but didn't really say anything to my parents since I had chalked it up to being overly jumpy, I was 11 at the time. Then my dad admitted to having seen the figure sitting on the roof of the house while he was working in the backyard, but he didn't want to freak us out, so he didn't say anything. Right then, my dad shouted towards the door that the figure wasn't welcome here and to leave the house now. Around Christmas that year, we were talking with my super Catholic family about it, and my aunt went around and blessed the house. We haven't seen anything since. Years later, my dad is listening to the Art Bell radio show, and someone calls in talking about shadow people, most specifically about the hat man. So he looks it up and flips a shit because it's exactly what my sister, him, and I all saw. My sister did, and her friend did not like me. Years later, just before she died, my sister and I discussed her friend Becky. My sister admitted that Becky was probably the ghost of a young girl who died on the property. I am attaching a brief narrative of the events. My childhood home was relatively newly built in a new part of Houston. We found out later that it had been part of the county poor farm and graveyard. Of course, many graves were left in place. So my sister met an imaginary friend named Becky who would come visit. Becky came and went from my sister's bedroom closet. I, on the other hand, developed night terrors and sleepwalking. My sister's door would be locked when Becky was visiting, and I couldn't get in to prove my sister was making Becky up. I got into trouble with my mom instead. I was staying home from first grade one morning, recovering from a tonsillectomy. I was in my grandmother's living space, napping on her guest bed, which also had a kitchenette on the other side of the room. I woke up, and a skillet on the stovetop was engulfed in flames. I yelled for my mom, and everyone ran into the small space. I jumped down from the bed to get a better look. So I end up with a skillet of burning grease spilled on me accidentally. So now I am laying in my own bed recovering from a tonsillectomy and first and second degree burns on my arms and legs. My sister comes into my room, looks at me very seriously, and tells me that Becky doesn't like me and to leave them alone when they are playing. When my eldest son was three or four years old, something weird went on for about three months. We would pick up all his toys and put them in the toy box before bedtime. Every morning all the toys would be out again, blocks, train tracks, etc. Anyway, I asked him why all the toys were out, and he told me Poppy Earl came in to play with him when it was dark. This freaked me out since we lived in rural areas and were alone. I stayed up a lot of nights waiting for the crashing of plastic toys, but I never heard a thing. I'd check on him constantly, and I'd ask him repeatedly who this Poppy Earl was. He told me he'd fly in through the window, wake him up, and play blocks with him. Doors and windows were locked every night, this person was not real, and it eventually stopped. 
It still gives me goosebumps years later, though. When my daughter was about four, she went through a phase where she was obsessed with Cookie Monster. She would make up stories about his madcap antics, which were often a mixture of potty humor and low-level antisocial behavior. These stories also included vivid descriptions of him coming into my room at night, pulling me out of bed, dragging me down the stairs, making sure that my head hit every step, and then throwing me into the trash bin outside. One day, it got darker. She told me that Cooking Monster had bought the same sheets as those on my bed. She continued that he made gloves out of them so that he could touch me while I was sleeping without me noticing. We lived in an old house at the time. The kids' room had two large closets attached. One was so large that it could almost be a second room, with a low ceiling. Each closet had a small door, two feet by two feet, that opened up to the attic. Just open them up and look into the pitch black attic. We stored all kinds of stuff in both closets. My oldest was three-ish at the time, he made a comment one day as I was putting him down for his nap that maybe the man will come out to play. I brushed it off because kids are silly. The next time he says it again, he says it the same way. So I ask him, what man? The man who hides in the closet, mommy, waits until you leave. I tore apart that closet right then. Nobody was in it, but I was certain that when I opened that door to the attic, a crazed man would be staring at me. We eventually switched rooms with the kids due to space, and that's when I discovered that on windy nights, the draft caused the little doors to swing open and slam shut. They didn't have any latches. I'd get up to see what the noise was and open the closet door to stare into this black square. Horrid. I piled shoes in front of it until I could get latches to put on both doors. Not to me but to my stepmother at the time. We used to live in this very old house, and we all had creepy occurrences like my uncle would have nightmares of little children bothering him. My other uncle felt a hand grab his leg one time while in his room. It just always felt like someone was watching you over your shoulder. There used to be this creepy, very long crawl space from one part of the house all the way to the garage or barn area. My dad went in there, and at the end was a very old bowl and spoon with a chain attached to the wall. Anyway, my stepmom was in the living room one night, going to bed, when she walked by the kids' room where my little stepsister slept and overheard her talking. My stepmom walks in and asks her, who are you talking to? To which my sister replies, the little girl over there. And my mom looks around in the room and says, where? And my sister goes, over there in the corner. Obviously, nothing was there, and I don't think my mom went to bed after that. So, I babysit for my mom's friend a lot, he has three daughters, but I usually only babysit the youngest, who is five years old. Last weekend, I stayed at their house overnight. During dinner that night, we were talking while I was walking around cleaning up. All of a sudden, she asked, why is his face like that? I ask who she's talking about because there isn't anyone else in the house. She says the man in the chair. Obviously, there's no one in the chair, so I say, I don't know, why don't you ask him yourself? And she responds, I don't want to, he scares me. I try to ask what he looks like, but she refuses to tell me. Then we finish eating, and she doesn't mention him again, but she does keep trying to make excuses to not go to sleep, which is really weird for her, she loves bedtime. After I got her to sleep, I took pictures around the kitchen to see if anything showed up, but I got nothing. I've had paranormal experiences before, but never in their house that I know of, so this could be a case of a kid's creepy imagination, but she only watches Frozen and MLP, so I My husband is a farmer. One night he asked me to pick him up after working, and it was pretty late, around 10 o'clock. So I loaded our two girls up, then four and two, and headed to the field. We get to the field, and C is finishing up his last round, so we had to wait for a minute. I rolled the windows down in the van and shut the engine off. After a few minutes, my two-year-old says, Mommy, who's that man outside? I said, I don't see a man, is your Ken doll on the floor? My four-year-old then piped up, he's right outside your door and staring at you. He's scary. He has blood on his face. That's when I turned the key, rolled the windows up, locked the doors, and called my husband and told him to hurry the hell up because the girls are terrified and there's apparently a scary man outside my door that I can't see, but both girls are describing him and what he's doing. Thankfully, C was done and heading up to the van at that moment, and we left. My girls are now 5 and 7, and they both still remember that man and refuse to go to that particular field. I have to ask my mother-in-law to watch them when I need to pick their dad up from there. About 8 years ago, my daughter, who was 5 at the time, Woke up in the middle of the night, crying and yelling, almost screaming, around 3 a.m. I went in, bleary-eyed, and sat on the side of her bed. My daughter is an eloquent and linguistically advanced little thing, 
but she was pretty much reduced to a blubbering, quivering mass of terror. She was clearly horrified by something, and she just put her head down on my leg and sobbed. She did so for several minutes, with me just patting her back and holding her. When she eventually calmed down, I asked her if she had had a bad dream. She told me that she didn't think that she had been dreaming, but that there had been someone looking in her window, and it had really frightened her. I got a little spark of anger, we had had some teenagers messing around in our backyard a few times at night, and if they had worked up the balls to climb the wall and look in, that was bad. My daughter's window is about 9 feet off the ground, and there's a sheer brick wall leading up to it, but you can climb it with a bit of effort, a run and then a grab on the bottom of the window will get you started. I thought that I had frightened off this group of teenagers by stepping out on the back porch with a large Gurkha knife a few weeks before, but apparently I had not. She went on, dispelling my assumption. Daddy, it wasn't those boys. He was just standing on the ground, looking in. As I mentioned, her window is 9 feet off the ground. And there was something wrong with his hands. His hands were really. She paused, looking for a word. Then she frowned and started crying again. Long. Long and strange, she cried hard again for a second, then kind of stuttered out, his face was long and wrong too. I held up my hand and asked if the long hands were like mine. She said no and put one hand on the base of my hand and the other about three or four inches from the tips of my fingers. This long, she said. But not as wide. Daddy, I'm scared. So to recap, my daughter woke me up by screaming and crying, then informed me that she saw a ducking slender man in the backyard and that she was scared and that he was strange and long. I was sleepy and had suddenly become convinced that there was a monster in the backyard. It's a lot easier to believe in things at 3a.m. So I did the hardest thing I've ever had to do as a dad. I smiled and said, kiddo, I think it was all a dream. I will look in the backyard though, okay? Internal voice, this is how horror movies start. Don't do it. She said, okay, because there's nothing bigger or stronger than daddy. She actually managed to smile at me and lay back down in her bed, secure in the knowledge that everything was fine. I got out the same huge Gurkha knife and went to the kitchen, which has an exit onto the back porch. I turned on the back lights. In the backyard, there was. Nothing. Nothing was there because it was all just a dream. She had a creepy, distressing dream, and she has a gift with language. She made me think that it was real, and it scared the bejesus out of me. I went back to her room and told her that everything was okay and that I would keep her safe. I held her until she slept, and then I went back to bed. I lay awake, staring at the window, until my other daughter woke up at 6 in the morning. My now 11-year-old daughter had an imaginary friend when she was 5. We were staying with my parents for the summer so the older kids could enjoy the country and spend time with family. On our second day of visiting, I heard my daughter talking to someone on the porch. I didn't think anything of it at first. I just assumed it was one of her older siblings. Then she came inside for some water and asked if she could bring some to her new friend, Elizabeth. I knew damn well that there were no other kids here. My parents live in the middle of four acres surrounded by woods and swamp land around the back of the property. So, okay, cool, my kid had an imaginary friend. No biggie. If only. Over the next few weeks, we will slowly be given details about Elizabeth. She has dark hair, but some of it is orange, looking like it's dirty from Kool-Aid. She has a bloody and messed up leg, and she limps because she was run over. Not run over by a car because it didn't have an engine. Elizabeth lives in the woods alone and doesn't sleep. She is darker than me, like she has a really good tan. Seriously, all she talked about was her new friend, Elizabeth. I was kind of creeped out, but even my mom thought maybe it was just my crazy imagination. Then, right at the month mark, my daughter asks my dad if she can have a sleepover with Elizabeth. He laughs and says, okay. Luckily, my mom and I made it home from the store just in time to watch my five-year-old walk towards the woods with a backpack. I rush out to stop her and remind her of our rules about not going into the woods alone. She was very upset that I cancelled her sleepover. The next day I went out on the porch with her, and she started talking to thin air again. This time arguing that it wasn't her fault her mommy said no and then begging Elizabeth not to hurt me for being mean we went inside immediately. There was a certain amount of logic that could change the feeling of dread that came over me. For the duration of our stay, I would hear really creepy stuff coming from that side of the woods, to the point that I avoided it entirely. I still do. A month or so ago, my younger brother came running downstairs when he should have been sleeping. Before he got to the other side of the room, where I was, he started screaming, I'm dead, Cody, I'm dead. He kept saying this over and over again. I got him to come over to the couch and talk to me. He would just keep repeating, I'm dead. 
he started screeching as loud as he could and shaking. I couldn't get him to stop. Finally, he just started running upstairs, and I chased after him to make sure he didn't hurt himself. It took my mom to get him to stop. She said it happened to her the other week, as if it were something totally normal. Now I can't walk around upstairs at night without thinking he's going to just be standing there, waiting, staring, ready to start screaming, at the end of the long, dark hallway. When I was a teenager, I was babysitting for a family with three young children. The boy was about eight, and the girls were in kindergarten. Their parents had driven an hour away to see a play but still planned to be home early in the night. However, I got a call that they had been in a minor car accident and would be home a couple hours later than planned. They asked several times how or if the boy was sleeping, which should have been a red flag, but I simply said that all the children were sleeping and left it there. About an hour goes by, and it's definitely nighttime now. I'm sitting on a sofa downstairs and looking through some old magazines to pass the time. Suddenly, I hear shuffling on the staircase. The boy was clearly sleepwalking, but his eyes were open and rolled back. He started running his hands along the wall and grabbing family pictures while screaming, they all must go, they all must go, before throwing the pictures down the stairs. Once I overcame a moment of sheer panic, I rushed up the stairs and tried to grab him. Once I'm about half a foot away from him, he starts screaming, if you touch me, you die. If you touch me, you die, followed by manic laughter. By this point, the sound of crashing glass and screaming has woken up the girls, and I can hear them crying. Totally freaked out but still focused on keeping the kid from falling down the stairs, I grab the boy by the back of his pajamas and lead him back up the rest of the stairs and towards his room. When we get to his doorway, he calmly walks to his bed and gets back in as if nothing has happened. Flabbergasted, I go over to his bed, and he is perfectly sound asleep. I can still hear the girls crying, so I rush to their room. They are huddled together in the back corner, crying. I say, oh no, no, it's okay, your brother is okay, he's just sleepwalking, he's fine. One of the little girls looks at me and says, we know he can't help it, Simon makes him do it. That was the last straw for me. I didn't ask any more questions, brought the girls downstairs with me, gave them milk and cookies, turned on the radio, and turned every single light on. Parents walk in and know immediately what happened. Never babysit for that family again. When my daughter was about a year old, we lived in a nice apartment complex. We used to walk next door all the time and visit our neighbor Joe. We'd play video games, listen to him play guitar, cook, discuss politics, etc., and we always had a nice time. One particular afternoon, after Eliana woke up from her nap, I decided to meet my, now ex, husband over there. I picked her up, changed her, and got her a snack. As I was walking over there, she was chattering away as well as a one-year-old can. As I walked into Joe's apartment, she stopped, looked up at the ceiling, towards the corner, and let out this terrible scream. I'd never heard anything like it from her before. She immediately began to climb over my shoulder. I kept trying to figure out what it could be, and during this, I almost dropped her. She was absolutely frantic. I took her outside and soothed her. After a few moments, I went back in. The same thing happened again. I'm not sure what she saw, but she was absolutely terrified. There was this little girl that came up to me when I was sitting down at one of those little benches they have in supermarkets by the vending machines. She introduced herself to me, she said her name was Linda, and I told her my name is Melvin. Hi Melvin, Cindy said she can see you. I thought to myself, what the duck? What is she going on about? I asked her if she meant her imaginary friend. No, Cindy, the girl that lives here. She's very lonely, she says she can see you even though you can't see her. It's okay though. My dad says he doesn't see her either. Then she skipped away towards her dad, who had just finished bagging stuff up. I don't doubt that she was just a kid with an overactive imagination, I had full-on conversations with my bathroom wall when I was a kid. Regardless, I thought the whole thing was pretty unsettling. I was at a friend's house after a night out of drinking, and she has a little sister who gives off vibes at times, like sometimes she'll just stare through you, not at you. It was around 3 in the afternoon. Now I've got a few tattoos, and she looked at the ones on my left arm, looked at me in the face, and said she couldn't wait to peel them off and staple them on her wall. She said a few creepy things in the past as well. One time I crashed at her place again due to the fact I had to catch a train, and I was too lazy to call for a taxi the day I needed to catch my train. We're watching a movie, and I can feel her staring. She paused the movie and looked at me and her sister and said, he knows how to kill someone in the most agonizing way, and he knows how to hide a body. Err what he did it to me in the past. So she's convinced I tortured her and buried her body in a past life. And the final one comes to mind, 
again hanging out at her place, see a pattern? Only for the sister to burst into the room almost in terror, only to calm down and say it's okay guys, I wanted to tell you about the rotting woman in the bathroom, but I guess y'all know already. 